Order of Operations, Part 2. I hope you already know, when you have a math problem with multiple different operations, there is a standard approach to use, the order of operations. And that is brackets first, then exponents, then division and multiplication in order from left to right, and finally addition and subtraction in order from left to right. Now we're going to add something new to those bed mass rules. If you've been practicing order of operations problems and getting them right, then you understand we are ranking each operation by importance. You'll notice that division and multiplication are on the same line on this slide. I'm going to show you why. You know that 2 times 5 is 10, right? So you also know that 10 divided by 2 is 5. Multiplication and division are linked. They are inverse operations. We can use multiplication knowledge to get to a division answer, like I did here. That's why we do multiplication and division on the same line of math thinking when we do a bed mass problem. They have the same priority. And of course, it's the same for addition and subtraction too, because they are also inverse operations. Did you know that exponents also have an inverse operation? This is it. You probably know this as the square root sign. It's also called the radical. Let's use an example to understand why exponents and radicals or roots are inverse operations. We can say a number times itself is a number squared. So 5 times 5 is 5 squared. Of course, that's 25. And for the inverse, if you have to find the square root of 25, you ask yourself the question, what number times itself gives me 25? 5 times 5 is 25, so the square root of 25 is 5. Inverse operations. Now we can also add radicals or roots into the ranking order list and we know that we're going to do them on the same line as exponents because these are inverse operations so we give them the same ranking priority when we do the math. Now you understand that a radical can be this which we read as the square root of 49 Evaluating it, if you know your tables, you know 7 times 7 or 7 squared is 49. The square root of 49 is 7. And a radical can also be a grouping of terms like this. This problem means that everything that sits under the radical, under that square root sign, has to be worked out first and then you find the square root of that result. To evaluate it, we use the order of operations. So here we go, using bed mass. Bed mass tells us brackets first. We have 5 plus 4, that's 9. Transfer the remaining terms perfectly in line so our working out is really clear. And don't forget the radical sign. Exponents are next. We have 4 squared, that's 16. Transfer the remaining terms including the radical. Division and multiplication are next. 27 divided by 9. That's 3. 3 nines are 27. Transfer the remaining terms. And now you can see we're nearly there. 16 plus 3 is 19, minus 3, back to 16 again. Put in the root sign. And now we do the square root part because we evaluated everything contained in that first radical. So now we have the square root of 16. 4 times 4 is 16. So the square root of 16 is 4. Whew, all that to get to the answer of 4. When you first look at it, it does seem a knotty problem. But when we break it down into little parts, according to the order of operations rules, we can handle it. Remember, keep calm and use bed mass. Next time, we'll find out what to do when we have brackets within brackets.